A 14-year-old girl left school and disappeared without a trace. The police and the FBI were looking for her, but they didn't have any clues. Nine months later, this mysterious case suddenly solved itself, shocking all of America. This story shows us that seemingly hopeless cases can have a happy ending, and there is a way out even from the most difficult situations. Abigail Hernandez lived with her mother and sister in the provincial town of Conway, New Hampshire. It's a small but very picturesque place with a population of about 10,000 people. The residents of the town were used to the serenity of a typical American province and no one could expect any horrible events to unfold right under their very noses. On October 9, 2013, Abby went to school as usual. In three days, the girl was about to celebrate her 15th birthday and was in a good mood. She and her mother planned to throw a big party, inviting all the girl's friends. After her lessons were over, she went home. Her mother, Xenia Hernandez, was home that day. From her window, she noticed the school bus with pupils, but Abby wasn't in it. At first, her mother didn't suspect anything weird. The girl could go for a walk with her friends or simply walk home. Then she sent her a message asking if everything was fine. There was no answer. Her mother started to worry. She decided to drive to school and find out where her daughter was. After getting there, she spoke to the teachers and found out that the librarian saw Abby leave the school. At this point, the mother was extremely worried. Her daughter didn't answer her messages and calls, and Xenia started to wonder what could have happened to her. At first, she thought Abby might have been injured or run over by a car on the way home. The woman called the hospital, but her daughter wasn't there either. She couldn't keep looking for her on her own, and in the evening, the mother turned to the police. The first thing the investigators assumed was that Abby had simply run away from home because of some family problems. Despite the objections of the mother, who insisted that she and her daughter had an excellent relationship, the police initially thought this was the case. Abby's best friend also told police that the girl had no family problems and couldn't just run away. On that day, in between classes, they had fun and discussed the upcoming birthday party. The FBI joined the case 48 hours after the disappearance. They began to interview all of Abby's acquaintances and reconstruct the chronology of the events of that day. No one was in the mood for fun on Abby's birthday. Instead of the planned celebration, the poor mother made a public statement addressing her daughter. She said how much she missed her and asked her to come home. In the meantime, the investigators didn't have a single lead. From the camera footage at her school, they found out that the girl had left the building when her lessons were over. She didn't get on the bus. Her boyfriend, however, was on the bus and he sent Abby several messages during the ride. At 2.53 p.m. she answered and after 14 minutes, her phone was turned off. For a short while, the police considered her boyfriend as a suspect but this line of investigation was a desperate move and didn't last long. This was the end of any potential leads. During the investigation, the police stopped considering the version of her running away. Firstly, they realized that Abby really had a good relationship with her mother and sister. Secondly, according to the recordings from the school cameras, it was clear that the girl didn't have any additional belongings with her. If she decided to run away from home, she would clearly need more things than just one backpack with textbooks. She also had money at home, and the girl didn't take it. If Abby decided to run away, she would definitely need some cash. The investigation dragged on for a month. All this time, her mother was in a state of constant stress and couldn't maintain her usual rhythm of life. Because of this, she didn't look into the mailbox for a long time and later regretted it. There, 
was a letter from Abby. The letter was sent 13 days after the girl disappeared. The contents of the letter made the mother happy, but also raised a number of questions. Dear Mom, I miss you and love you more than you can imagine. I'm sorry I did what I did. I read newspapers and watched reports. To answer your question, yes, I'm alive. I miss you, Mom, but I won't tell you where I am now. The forensic scientists examined the DNA on the paper and confirmed that the letter was written by Abby. Her mother also stated that the text was written by her daughter, but the information provided by Abby was illogical. Then the mother suggested that Abby was forced to write these things. The police waited another month before publishing the letter. They assumed that public disclosure of the very fact of its existence could expose Abby to even greater risk. What if the girl was being held captive and she managed to send this letter without the kidnappers knowing? It wasn't very logical. Why didn't Abby give any details so that they could help her? But the police didn't want to risk it. When the letter was finally published, it became the main topic of discussion in the small town. Most people immediately believed that Abby had just run away and started to judge her and her family. Some people were outraged that the police sent everyone into a frenzy and interrogated half of the town just because some girl ran away from home. The investigation basically stopped after this. Abby seemed to disappear and the police couldn't find any traces of her. This continued until July 20th, 2014, when the case solved itself, instantly making this story a sensation. Nine months after the disappearance, Abby appeared on the doorstep of her house. If you already assume that the girl really ran away, hold your judgment. When she arrived home where she was met by her shocked mother, Abby said that she had been kidnapped. On that fateful day when the girl disappeared, she walked home from school. Despite the fact that the town was small, she had to walk for quite a while. At some point, a car stopped near the girl and the driver offered to give her a ride. Abby agreed because she was already tired and had blisters on her feet because of her new boots. At first, everything was fine. A middle-aged man was driving in the direction of her house until he suddenly turned into an empty parking lot. Abby realized she could be in danger and tried to get out of the car, but the man pulled out a weapon and told her not to move. He handcuffed Abby and put a cap on her so she couldn't see the road and then drove off in an unknown direction. Abby tried to convince the stranger to let her go during the whole ride. She promised not to tell anyone about what had happened, but he kept on driving until he finally brought the girl to his house 30 miles from her town. He locked Abby into a large metal container that looked like a room from the inside. Then the kidnapper put a special collar on her and explained to the girl that he would electrocute her every time she tried to scream. He also said that the container door was connected to a mechanism that would set fire to everything around if someone tried to save Abby. The girl had been in captivity since then, subjected to regular violence. From the very first days, she decided to earn the kidnapper's trust to get a chance to escape. She constantly told him that she didn't blame him for anything and understood his motives. Abby also promised not to tell anyone about what had happened if he let her go. As the months passed, the kidnapper really started to trust the girl more and more. Eventually, he started to take her out of the container to his house, where the man printed counterfeit money. He earned a living this way, and eventually he asked Abby to help him carry out his illegal activities. Over time, the man lost his vigilance more and more. He was beginning to believe that Abby would never really try to escape and that she even enjoyed spending time with him. Thanks to this, he once made his first serious mistake. The kidnapper gave Abby some cookbooks so that she would learn how to cook. One of them said, Property of Nathaniel Kibbe. Then Abby asked, Who is this Kibbe? The kidnapper turned pale and in a trembling voice asked, How do you know my name? 
She knew the name of her kidnapper since then, but it didn't help her break free. This story came to its conclusion quite unexpectedly for the girl. One day, Kibby just put her in the car, drove her to her hometown, and dropped her off on the street a mile away from her house. As it turned out later, the kidnapper did it out of fear. Remember his little money counterfeiting business? It was because of this that he had to release his captive. The thing is that Kibby gave his acquaintance three $50 bills that he made himself under the guise of real money. She went to a local supermarket and tried to pay with them, but they identified them as fake. The police arrived at the scene and the woman told them the name of the person who gave her these bills. After that, she called Kibby and said that his house would be raided and searched. Of course, in this case, the police would have been in for a real shock. Apart from the production of fake money, they would have found the girl who disappeared nine months ago, the one the whole district was talking about. Then he panicked and decided to let Abby go home, demanding not to tell anyone his name and any details of the abduction. Most likely, if the girl hadn't earned his trust, he would have decided to get rid of her in another way. But everything turned out in Abby's favor. She returned home. At first, the girl refused to speak to the police. She didn't give any details of what had happened, even to her mother. Only a week later, Abby finally made up her mind and revealed the name of her kidnapper. A SWAT team broke into Kibby's house and arrested him. The kidnapper's trial dragged on for several years. In 2016, he pled guilty and received from 45 to 90 years in prison. At the time of the abduction, Kibby was 34 years old, so he will spend either most or the rest of his life in prison. Abby also attended the trial. She stated that, despite all the horrors that Kibby made her go through, she forgave him. The girl said that what happened made her appreciate her life and freedom in a new way. Now, Abby and her boyfriend are raising a child, the girl continues to live her life to the fullest, despite everything she had to go through. Her story clearly demonstrates that a person can get out of the most terrible situations if they really want it. Leading criminal psychologists cite Abby's behavior as an example of how to behave if you're kidnapped because the girl did everything she could to save her life. Although these events left an indelible mark on her, she continues to live and love this life.